on a little bit of a I'm fine in you. I'm in a game, Nandi. Eh, what about you? Dago hai, umang, wagai, uirangmo. I go by the name Aniki Malewana. Currently, I taught at Napscom Secondary School, doing grade 12 as a science student. Oh, science stream. All right. So maybe oh, the weather here in Vetu, like we're under a tree right now because it's hot. Okay. How how do you cope with the heat here? Um, I'm used to it, so. I don't see it as a problem. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm back home. I'm used to hot and humid. Kuno Olwandle, there's a coast, but also Kuno Mbuzo, Kuno Liputo, and there's a Karabo in the studio. So, what's your question to our teacher in the studio? My question is, what does DNA look like? Cool, what a great question. What does DNA look like? Now this is one of my favorite sections of biology, genetics, because it's so real. It's who we are, it's what makes us us, what makes us unique. So I'm really excited for this. Right, so what does DNA look like? In order to figure out what it looks like, we need to know what it is made up of, because it is not just one thing. It's made up of a few different molecules. Now DNA and RNA, we classify them as nucleic acids and they consist of nucleotides arranged in chains. Now in RNA it is a single strand of nucleotides and in DNA it is a double strand of nucleotides. Okay, very important, DNA and RNA, although similar in some ways, very different in some other ways. Okay, right, so what is a nucleotide? No idea. Okay, let's have a look. A nucleotide is a packet of three molecules bonded or joined together in a very specific way. Now they are fixed or joined to each other in such a way that they cannot be physically pulled apart. Only enzymes, specific enzymes or other chemicals can break apart these bonds. Okay, so you're with me so far. We've got a little packet of three molecules stuck together in a special way, and then many of these packets added together create our DNA or RNA strands. With me so far, guys? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Right, let's have a look at these three molecules that make up this nucleotide packet, okay? Have a look at the screen. We have, in the blue there, a sugar, green, a phosphate, and the yellow is what we call a nitrogenous base. Now the sugar, we can see there it is a pentose sugar molecule. What does pentose mean? Pent. It's a number. Uh, five. Five. There we go. Okay, so you can see that sugar is sometimes also called a five carbon sugar. Okay, and it's nice to remember pentose means five and there are five little points on that sugar molecule. Did you see it? Yes. Mm. Okay. Right, now this sugar can either be ribose or deoxyribose. If it is ribose, we find it in RNA. If it is deoxyribose, we find it in DNA. Because that's what RNA and DNA stand for. Have a look at the picture again. Ribose helps us make ribonucleic acid and deoxyribose helps us make deoxyribose nucleic acid. You see there, the RNA and the DNA. Mm -hmm. Easy, right. Now, each sugar molecule is connected to a phosphate molecule. Okay, easy. Then, that's usually down because that's gonna make the backbone of our strand. Then coming off each sugar molecule, we have a nitrogenous base. Now, there are a few different kinds of bases. Let's have a look. Okay, in our DNA, we have four possible nitrogenous bases, four possible monomers. We have adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, okay? I don't care how you guys say them, but make sure you spell them right, because if you spell them wrong, you're gonna get it wrong in your test, okay? Right, then when we look at RNA, they're all exactly the same, except for one slight change. Have a look at the picture. Instead of our thymine, we have a monomer called uracil. Okay, this is just something you guys have got to learn, because once you've got it, it's super easy, and DNA is super easy to understand. Now, what's very important, we're taking this one step further, okay, with these nitrogenous bases, they do not like to mingle with anyone, okay? There are specific bases that stick together, and we call these complementary bases, okay? Mm -hmm. If I say, your shirt complements your eyes, okay? I'm giving you a complement 
M I N T. Mm -hmm. Okay, we spell complementary bases with an E N T. Have a look there. Okay, complementary, not complementary. We're not saying that they're polite, we're saying that they match each other, they go well together. Right, so let's have a look over here. Our first basis, adenine, is complementary to thymine. And they fit in together quite nicely, right? And then the next complementary base set is guanine and cytosine. They fit in together nicely. Easy. Right, now I told you that in RNA there is one slight difference. Do you remember what changed? The, what's the thingy? Yeah. Thymine is replaced with uracil. Uh -huh. Okay, so we throw that one away. And the uracil now fits into the adenine. Okay, so these are the only ones that can go together. And a nice way that I like to think of it is always start with your DNA. So we have A and T, okay, at. They're both sharp letters, A and T. And then we have cytosine and guanine, C and G. Okay, they're both nice round letters. So I like to remember that those two go together. Then you've just got to remember that thymine is replaced with uracil. And then we have AU. Okay, ow. Got it. Right. So um, let's have a look here at this little DNA molecule. This is what it will eventually look like. So you can see I've paired up all my bases, okay, my C and G, as well as my A and T. This is a DNA molecule, obviously. I'm not, I haven't done a, an RNA one as well, but I know you're super clever, so you know exactly what that looks like. Along here, our white bits, I'll show you on this one, is our sugar. Okay, so there's all our sugars along there. And this, you can see our P4, phosphate. Got it, mm -hmm. phosphate. Okay, now what we call this shape, do you see how it's kind of twisted around? It's like a ladder that we have twisted. Mm -hmm. See that? We call that a double helix shape. Okay, it's very important that you understand that. H-E-L-I-X, okay. Right, let's have a look at the slide again. All the information in your cells and instructions to your cells and body about how to function and what to look like are carried on your genes, which are made up of DNA. And you inherit this information from your parents. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. So what's important to remember is DNA, we have a double strand, double helix, ladder that has been swiveled. Okay, RNA, we have a single strand. And you need to remember the three molecules that make up your nucleotide. We have our pentose sugar, five points. We have our phosphate. And then we have our four nitrogenous bases. And it's very important to remember the complementary bases. Okay, adenine goes with thymine, mm -hmm. A and T. Cytosine goes with C and G. Guanine. Okay, guys, please remember to, to, to know how to spell those. And then what does, what gets replaced with what when we go into the RNA? Uh, thymine gets replaced with uracil. Well done, give yourself a I hand. I try, I try, I so try. Clever. Right, I just want to go back here very quickly. There's one more slide that I want to show you. Right, now, the reason you need to know which are complementary bases, is because, for example, in whatever language you are looking at, letters are put together to make a certain word. If we jumble the letters up, it doesn't make sense, okay? So it is very important to understand that is the order in which the individual nucleotides are bonded, which make up your coded information on the DNA. Okay, so just like the order of letters in a word determine its meanings, so the order of the nucleotides along a chain of DNA make up the coded message. So if I look at this DNA, I don't know, it might be for someone with blue eyes and curly brown hair. If I had to take one of these out and swap them around, it could change that person's look absolutely completely. Wow. Okay, so it's very important. And guys, what's a nice way is you can even go buy yourself some little sweeties and make yourself a DNA. If you can make yourself a, mod a model, even cut it out of different colored paper, make yourself a model so you understand it. Okay, once you've got that, DNA is easy. Replication is easy. My question is, why is DNA so important? 
Right, why is DNA so important? Now, if you were listening carefully with the previous learning question, you should already have a kind of idea as to why DNA is important. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we're made up of DNA, okay? So without DNA, we kind of don't exist. And I mean, have you ever, has anyone ever said to you, oh, you have your mother's eyes, or you look just like your dad, but you have your mom's ears, or? All the time. All the time, okay? That's because your DNA comes from your parents' DNA. Their DNA comes together to make a unique individual. That's why we are all unique, unless we are twins that have split from the same egg, okay? Mm -hmm. Right, so that's why DNA is so important. It gives you all your genetic information. It determines how you look and also how your body functions. Okay, DNA plays an important role in metabolism and it creates proteins with, which help you to grow. Okay, and not only bigger and stronger and sometimes fatter, but also if you get a sore and skin needs to, to regenerate, okay, things like that. Okay, so that's why DNA is so important. Now, what I have for you today is an analogy. Okay, for those of you that are uh, doing well in your English, you'll know that that is kind of like a metaphor. Okay, did you know that? We, yes, it is so clever. I'm so glad. Right, okay, so let's have a look at this analogy. We are going to compare a, a cell with the nucleus and the chromatin network and all the DNA in there to a library. Okay, let's have a look at the screen. Right, a library is a place to store books containing information. The nucleus is an organelle in the cell which contains DNA which stores information. Easy, remember the nucleus is the brain of the cell. Okay, it's where everything starts and what tells the cell how to do what. Right. Next one, some information is kept in reference books such as dictionaries and encyclopedias which may not be removed from the library. DNA, which contains important information, cannot leave the nucleus. It is stuck there within the nuclear membrane. Okay, there are many reference books in the library. Each book contains different chapters or pages with important information relating to different topics. Just like there are many chromosomes made of DNA in the nucleus, each chromosome is made up of different genes which code for the making of different proteins. Okay, and if there is an issue on one of those chromosomes, or there is possibly an extra one of a specific chromosome, that's when we get deformities, okay, and mutations. So it's very important to understand that these, each and every single chromosome codes for something. It codes for your hair color. Is your hair curly or straight? It codes for your nose shape, your ear shape. Do you have an earlobe or does it just attach directly to the head? What do you have? Mine attaches directly. Awesome. Now you have little earlobes. There we go. You have nice earlobes. Right, let's have a look at the next one. Because these reference books contain information that may be needed frequently by many different people, these books cannot be taken out of the library, as we have already said. DNA contains all the information needed to run the cells and make new cells. Therefore, DNA cannot leave the nucleus. The nucleus is the central storage place for this information. However, people can read the reference books in the library where these special books are kept, which means the nucleus is compartmentalized. That was in the quiz, guys from the rest of the cell, so it keeps the DNA safe. So even though we are using these reference books, even though the DNA is being used, it is needed, it needs to be kept safe because it's so important. Right, let's carry on. You may need to get information from the reference books for a project. Now the cell may need to make a protein for growth. The DNA carries the instructions for cell metabolism and the making of proteins for the cell on the genes, which we have already said and you should know. Right, if you want to take some information you read in a reference book with you when you leave the library, you need to make a copy of the information. Now the proteins are made in the cytoplasm, not in the nucleus. Therefore, a copy of the relevant information needs to be made and taken to the cytoplasm. And this is where we start looking at DNA replication and translation of, of RNA, which is a topic that we will get to very soon. Also something very exciting. Yes, I'm not